Welcome back to another episode of the DFS Express. I'm your host, the Daily Fantasy Sniper, here to talk UFC 231. Our main event is Brian Ortega taking on Max Holloway for the UFC Featherweight Championship. Guys, as always, the Express episodes brought to you by Loudmouth MMA and Newsom MMA. Make sure and check those guys out on Twitter. Uh, Newsom's got a great website, um, YouTube page, where there's tons of MMA content. He does premium bets. Check that out. Um, hi- highly recommend it. And I am a coach for the DFS Army. Obviously, I specialize in DraftKings. While I make some bets and I posted them, I see them on Twitter. I don't charge for those. I'm a, I'm a much better DraftKings player, and that's what we're here to talk about in the Express. I'm a coach for DFS Army. The uh, link is for that is in the description here on YouTube. Click that. Use code Sniper for 10% off. Here in the Express, I am going to do exactly what it sounds like. I'm going to go through these fights very quickly, giving an overview for DraftKings. If you want the full breakdown on these fights, make sure your DFS Army VIP will cover the fight in depth as well of, as well as DraftKings strategy. I record these on Wednesday nights. These are general thoughts for each fight. I hopefully get get you guys interested. Always hit me up on Twitter at the DFS Sniper. One S there. We can always talk fights. Um, but that being said, let's just dive right into it. First fight of the night, I believe now is uh, Carlos Diego Ferreira, who's at 9,200 against an opponent who's not yet in the player pool. It is Kyle Nelson. Uh, that fight was just made this afternoon. I'm going to look into it a little more, but my knee-jerk reaction from the half a Kyle, Kyle Nelson fight I watched is that I'm going to want a lot of Carlos Diego Ferreira at 9,200. The odds are going to be huge. He should be almost a free square. Um, more to come on that. Again, that fight just got announced, but I do like Carlos Diego Fiera. Knee-jerk reaction, he should be super chalky. Alexander Rakic, 9,500, taking on Devin Clark at 6,700. Rakic is about minus 600. I think he's a little too expensive, though, because Devin Clark is not an easy guy to finish. I know I know Jan Blahovic did it, you know, caught him in a submission, and Alexander Nicholson did it. Rakic, though, while he's he's good, he's has been taken down before. We saw him. Uh, we saw Rakic taken down in his UFC debut against Frank Marbojoso. Justin Ledet, who he brutalized as a stand-up fighter. So stylistically, this could be a problem for Rakic. I do think he's the better fighter. I think his speed and um, his strike on the outside is enough to keep Clark at bay. But if Clark has success, it's going to be on the feet. Sixty-seven hundred. He's not out of play for most cards, but there are a lot of live dogs on this card. Rockets for me is probably a little too expensive, but he's the pick to win the fight. Uh, Chad Lepre, 9,100, taking on uh, Diego Lima at 7,100. Another interesting fight, Chad Lepre is about minus 350 right now, somewhere in that range. Excuse me. Um, knocked out against Vicente Luque last time out. Before that, a win over Galore Bufondo. Have to be a little worried about the chin because uh, he was even knocked down in the Bufondo fight. But Diego Lima is just not UFC caliber. This is his second UFC uh, UFC stint. Technically, he's on a four-fight losing streak. He lost to Yushin Okami last time out. He lost to um, he loses to grapplers and strikers. He lost to um, Jesse Taylor. He lost to Yushin Okami, and he lost to strikers like Li Jing Liang and Tim Means. Overall, I think Chad Lepre is just a little better everywhere, a little faster. I think he hits a little harder. I like Lepre to get this one done. Um, Diego Lima has been finished before as well. I will say Lepre, while I like him to win a lot for DFS, I don't think he's my favorite play up in that range. Brad Katona, 8,900, taking on Matthew Lopez at 7,300. Follow me on Twitter. I have a bet on this fight. I took a stab on the underdog at Matthew on Matthew Lopez. I got him at plus 235. He's down to plus 190. I think that line's going to keep fa- uh, falling. I think come fight time, this is going to be your DraftKings line value. Um, I was really surprised at the line that I got. Look, Katona's coming off his ultimate fighter win. He beat Jay, Jay Cuccinello, got a couple takedowns in that fight. Matthew Lopez, though, is a grinder and a wrestler. Um, he is on two straight losses, but it's Rafael Sunsau and um, Alejandro Perez. And Perez, he dominated, he dominated the first round of that fight, landed three takedowns, almost got a submission, gassed out in the second. I do wish he would check a leg kick. I do wish his cardio was a little better, but... 7,300, a guy who I think his grappling is better. Um, he knocked out Johnny Eduardo. I think he's clearly the more proven prospect, and while Katona's good, good solid all-around game, I think the odds are off, the price is off. 
give me Lopez at 7,300 to win via wrestling. Elias Theodore, 8,200, taking on Eric Anders at 8,000. Look, DraftKings, this is really simple. I don't go anywhere near Elias Theodore who fights. Anders is going to want to try and grapple. Theodore knows, knows that. He's going to stay in his bike. Hit and move, pitter-patter. It's what he does. He's very good at it. Uh, usually, when he wins on DraftKings, he does not score that well. Um, looking at his log real quick. He scored over 100 a couple times, but not, it's not going to get Eric Anders out of there. I don't think Anders is tough. Gassed out against Tiago Santos. This is going to and took a lot of damage. It's going to be a whole different type of fight. I like Theodore over three rounds um, to play patty cake and win the fight. If Anders wins, his success is going to be through grappling. So even though I'm picking Theodoro to win the fight, Anders would be the better DraftKings play if you want to go there. Now, I just realized I don't have the chat window open, so let me – I record these live, uh, by the way. Um, Vincent Mango says, T-City, what's up, Sniper, pumped up for this card. I am stoked for this card, too. Great top-to-bottom card. You may not like where I'm going in the main event, though. Caitlin Chukagian, 8,700, taking on Jessica I, 7,500. Don't worry, Vince, it's not a super strong take. Uh, taking on Jessica I at 7,500. Uh, this fight, look, Jessica I, I don't think is very good. And Caitlin Chukagian is almost a female Elias Theodoro. I don't think I will be able to get Chukagian down. Chukagian's got a good enough Jets game to get back up. You know, Jessica I's wins are over Jessica Rose Clark, um, who she's able to outstrike. She, she shouldn't be able to outstrike Chukagian and Kalindra Faria. Same deal there. I think Chukagian is just too much of a polished striker. Um, has a good enough get-up game to uh, nullify where I is good. The problem is Chukagian, like Theodore, scores terrible on DraftKings. Her wins, 83, 64, 61. No thanks for 8,700. Uh, I like Chukagian to win, but not a fight I'm interested in on DraftKings. Olivier Aubon Mercier, 8,500. Taking on Gilbert Burns, 7,700. This is a fight I'm interested in on DraftKings because it should be grappling-based. Um, the line has closed a little bit. I believe it's just about Pickham. Burns might be a small underdog still. Uh, Aubin Mercier coming out last time. It really got handled by Alex Hernandez, who showed he has some grappling in his game. And the issue here is that Aubin Mercier is a good grappler, but he's not going to want to go on the on the ground with, with Dorino. Like That guy is a really solid BJJ practitioner. He has better jits than, than OAM. And he is striking. Well, neither one of them are polished. Dorino throws harder. Like he, he looks for the knockout. I'm a little worried. He's a grappler who's fallen in love with his hands. Was knocked out by Dan Hooker last time out, but but before that had two straight KOs. Ultimately, for the price, I think Burns is way more likely to get a finish. I think it could be two grapplers canceling each other out, and they stand. And then I like the power of Burns. Um, definitely interesting fight though, because both guys do have grappling potential, but. Like I mentioned, there, there's that possibility they stand because they both respect each other's grappling. But uh, give me Burns for the harder strikes at 7,700. Claudia Gedalia, 9,300, taking on Nina Ansaroff at 6,900. I like Gedalia a lot in this one. I know she got a little, um, she got rocked in the fight against Esparza. Things definitely got dicey there. But Esparza had the ground game uh, that, that Gedalia had to respect and, and caused her some trouble there. I don't think Ansaroff going to be able to do that. That is, you know, where Gadelia shines. I think she's going to get takedowns and, and really beat up Nan, Nina Ansaroff for three rounds. Who's on a three-fight win streak, but it's Randa Marcos, um, Angela Hill, Jocelyn Jones, Liebarger. Those last two striking matches, Marcos, she was able to stop the takedown, but I think Gadelia is stronger and too much pressure for her. It will help that she's seen the style, but I don't think Nina Ansaroff has a lot in this one for Gadelia. The worry is Gadelia's old in fight years. Is she finally shot? I don't think she is. I'm not going all in for that reason, but I do like Claudia Gadelia uh, a lot of that price tag at 9,300 as far as top end options go and grappling upside. Tiago Santos, 8,800, taking on Jimmy Manoa, 7,400. Big guys, light heavyweights, someone going to sleep in this one. Big does not go to decision prop. I like Tiago Santos. We've seen a decline in Jimmy Manoa, but you know Santos was. Hurt in the Anders fight. You know, Holland, he dominated the whole time. He was knocked out against David Branch. There's a little bit of worry there. The problem is I think either one, uh, Santos will push the pace. Manawa does have power, big guys. And ultimately, Manawa's fight older. I like Santos in this one. 
and it's a good GPP fight. I'm not confident enough to roster Santos in cash with these big guys. I do think a great fight to target. Give me Tiago Santos, the younger guy. Better, I like to kickboxer against the boxer. Um, and if anyone's going to take this fight to the ground, it also should be Tiago Santos. So give me him at 8,800. Hakeem Dawadu, 8,600, taking on Kali, uh, Kyle Bokniak at 7,600. Look, Bokniak, from what I've seen, is going to be the Twitter darling this week. He is, um, I want to just pump everybody's brakes here. He's two and three in the UFC. He should be one and four. He got the decision in that Barzola fight that he just should not have gotten. Um, he did look, I was at the fight against Magomed Sharipov. Dude is really tough, but he only landed 43 significant strikes. I think Dawadu is tough, is not tougher, is, is faster, and he's going to have a hard time. Um, Bakhna's going to have a hard time dealing with, with Dawadu here. I think Dawadu wins a decision. I don't think Bakhna's going to look for takedowns. They should stand and trade, but I think Dawadu's movement is going to be the key here. Ultimately, I actually don't think this is a decent, a good fight to target. Um, mostly, I think, from what I've seen, it could change as the week goes on. Again, I record these Wednesday. I think Bakhniak's actually pretty popular. I think that will do if he wins. It's a striking matchup, and we've seen how tough that, that Bakhniak is. Give me Dawa do for the win at 8,600 in a fight that I will probably be overexposed on as compared to the field. Gunny Nelson, 8,400. Taking on Alex Cowboy Oliveira at 7,800. This is a fight I will be overexposed to the field. I like this fight to finish. Um, Alex Cowboy Oliveira uh, beat Carlos Pedersali last time out, stomped him, went over Carlos Condit, knocked out Ryan Lothair, not uh, submitted to Means, but was knocked out by Yancey Medeiros in that crazy back-and-forth war. Benny Nelson's coming off of a controversial um, loss where, Gunner, where Santiago Pontanibio tried to rake his eye out. Um, before that, two fight, one streak, submission guy, looks to be in crazy shape. I think we've all seen the um, Twitter picture at this point. Look, this fight comes down to, I'm going to have both sides. Cowboy should pressure. Gunny is going to try and get this fight to the ground. Well, he's not a great wrestler, obviously great BJJ. And we've seen Cowboy Oliveira, for as much as you like his kickboxing, um, we've seen him be taken down before. He was taken down by Ryan LaFleur in their first round. He was taken down by Carlos Condit. Like he can, you know, Will Brooks took him down. He can be controlled. Um, I don't think he'll be able to submit Gunny. Overall, I'm going to favor favor Gunny Nelson just because I've seen Oliveira be taken down. Uh, but it's not out, out of the realm of possibility that Oliveira marches forward and is able to uh, catch Gunnar Nelson. I, this fight is under one and a half. It's also minus 300 to end inside the distance. I'll have both sides, but I like the guy with some submission upsides. He, upside here in Gunnar Nelson. So give me him at 8,400 in an overall um, good fight. Probably the fight that's second most fight I'm looking forward to on the card behind the main event. Joanna Violence, Joanna Yeun Jajic is the underdog, 6,800, taking on Valentina Shevchenko at 9,400. To me, this line is way off. People jumping off the Joanna Violence chain, uh, train way too early. I know she. I know she, uh, she's coming off a win against Tisha Torres. Uh, back-to-back losses to Rose Namajunas. She's also moving up a w- up in weight, which should help her. Uh, look, she's the one who's going to be the aggressor in this fight. Shevchenko is the counter-striker. Shevchenko is a darling right now. Um, she she finished um, Kawashera with a, in sort of 140 points, and that was the Mario Yamasaki let her bleed, be a warrior fight. Other than that, she doesn't score great. 92 points in five rounds against Holly Holm. Uh, 69 points and a win over Sarah Kaufman. You know, there are two losses to Amanda Nunes. Obviously, didn't didn't score great. She's not really going going to. She did score 93 points in her win over Juliana Pena. Occasionally, we'll look for takedowns. Uh, that was against Holly Holm. I think she had some takedowns against Kawashara too, but that was just a fight that shouldn't have existed. We've seen uh, Joanna Violence's takedown defense before. It, it's solid. This fight should stay on the feet. She's got good movement, and she's the one pressing, pressure, pressing forward. She should throw a lot of strikes. I don't think that um, Tisha Torres is going to tie her up constant or Joanna, sorry, Shevchenko is going to tie her up constantly like Torres did. It should play out at range. Joanna's my favorite punt of the card at 6,800, should score well over five rounds. I think Shevchenko is a little too expensive. I, I don't see Shevchenko getting a finish. I know Nam- I know Rose um, finished JJ. You know, 
big weight cuts have an effect on the chin. They're still 125 pound women. I'm not going to count on the knockout. And Shevchenko is really expensive, and I do expect her to be popular, just based on, you know, the darling she is right now. So I'm opposite of most people. I'm going to pick JJ to get a volume based decision, 48-47. It won't surprise me at all if Shevchenko um, goes out and outclasses her. She's a great striker too. It's two good strikers. No matter which way you lean, though, even if I'm if I'm in the minority minority picking JJ, I think she's clearly the better DraftKings play at 6800. Unless you think Shevchenko is going to finish her in the first round. All right, main event time. Max Holloway, 8,300, taking on Brian Ortega at 7,900. Uh, obviously, a great fight. Let's hope it holds together. Hanato Moicano is waiting in the wings should uh, something crazy happen here. Look, the question mark is Holloway's health. If it wasn't for that, I think I'd be much more confident picking Max Holloway. That being said, I'm still going to pick, pick Max Holloway. Um, has not given up a takedown in the longest time. Um, I think since the Conor McGregor fight, oddly enough. And he's fought guys who will go for, for takedowns. You know, um, Anthony Pettis, Ricardo Lamas, Charles Oliveira, Cobb Swanson, Jim Miller. Uh, you know, has not given up a takedown. And Ortega's not a great wrestler. He gets these subs, but he winds up in these advantageous uh, positions or he gets guys to desperation shot to shoot on them by moving forward. I think Holloway is clearly the better striker at range. He's faster. Ortega might ha- might have a little bit more pop, bigger guy. But I think Holloway moves better, should keep him on the outside. Five rounds does give Ortega more opportunities to land a submission. Clearly very live, especially because of this the health issue with Holloway. I can't see it. We don't know exactly what's going on. That's why I'm, I'm not going to bet on this fight. Just I have a hard time gauging it. I do think this is stackable in cash games on DraftKings. I, though, for a pick, give me Holloway. I'm not going to be a believer in whatever medical issues he has going on in terms of affecting his fight fighting until I see it. I know it's risky, but I'll have both sides in GPPs. Ultimately, I think Ortega will be more popular, and I'll be on the other side. Um, and I'm hedging myself that way with stacking cash games. So Holloway, by movement, five rounds, plenty of volume, nothing to worry about. I do think the winner of this fight probably ends up on the winning lineup unless Ortega you know, is losing and scores a late submission, which is kind of his MO. So for that reason, I probably won't go all in on this fight. But give me Max Holloway at 8,300. So that's what I got for you guys. Actually, before I wrap up, let me see. Um, I have some comments here. Oh, my boy, whose name I'm going to say right this time, um, Pulpo, bet on Max Sniper. I'm picking Max, but it's hard to bet on a guy who, like I said, the health issues. I, I can't pick him. I need to bet on the best fight in ages. If I'm going to bet on this fight, you could bet does not go to decision. It's like minus 190-ish. I have enough bets on this card. Um, maybe if I'm See how the night goes. Maybe I'll, I'll lay something down at, at the last second. Uh, follow me on Twitter for that, at the DFS Sniper. Make sure you're a member of the DFS Army. We'll go into all those fights in much more detail. DraftKings-specific content, optimizers, um, all that good stuff. Code is in the description. Please subscribe uh, to my YouTube channel, at the, at the DFS Sniper, if you happen to be listening to this on the Loudmouth MMA channel. Click the link in that description. Become a member. Subscribe, like. I really appreciate all of that, you guys. Good luck in your contest. Hit me up on Twitter just to talk fights. And I will, um, you know what? I'm just going to assume I'll see you on Twitter as we are uh, live tweeting for UFC 231. Enjoy the fights, guys. It's going to be a great card.